Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here today looking at Jeju Island, a game by Gary Kim, Kim Jun Yup, and Jung Yeon Min, originally released in 2015 by Happy Baobab in Korea, and now released in English by Australian publisher Grail Games in 2016. And in this game, two to four players walk around Jeju Island just picking stuff up off the beach, trying to keep other people from picking up stuff in order to go over to the visitor's bureau where they have these boards showing, hey, these are the things that we want you to see. Have you seen these things? If so, we will give you points as a reward. And whoever collects the most points wins. How does this work? Here are the components for Jeju Island with the game mostly being set up for play, but not quite finished yet. You have six stacks of roughly equal height with these stacks having the sightseeing tiles. There are six types of tiles along with a seventh joker, which can represent any of the other six. And you just shuffle things together and make sure there's no jokers on top. You have six wooden neutral discs and you place one of those at each of the six locations. Each player then takes their two discs and place them, places them at different locations. Although once you go on the board, you can go where someone else goes and cover them up. The final player to place will place the Harubong statue on one of the six locations. You'll lay out five sightseeing target or goal cards, which show the tiles that you need to collect in order to claim the card, which will give you a certain number of points as well as a bonus. And now you are going to alternate turns over the course of the game. Most of your turns are going to involve taking a stack that includes one of your tiles and going in either a clockwise or counterclockwise direction, dropping off the bottommost stack with each step that you take. So green might do something like this. After you move, each player at the top of a stack takes the token that's shown there. So red will get this mountain, yellow will get an eel, green will get this orange, and then because they're located next to the statue, they can take this statue and move it to any location or leave it where it is and take the tile that's shown on top of that stack. So I'll get this Joker Pearl Diver here. That's my turn. Now yellow goes. Both of yellow's tokens are in one stack, so they have only one choice of what to choose, but they can go in either direction. So we'll go here, here, here. Yellow takes these, red takes this, and the game continues. So if black comes over here, or red rather, red gets the joker, green gets an eel, yellow gets a cactus in it, horse, and green again gets to do whatever they want. We'll just leave it here and take a joker. Maybe on green's turn now, instead of moving, they are going to, because they're already located at the statue, why would they want to move away from that? I'm going to buy one of these cards. So I will spend an orange, a joker for the pony and the eel for the question mark and i'll get this card which is worth one point at the end of the game but more importantly it lets me forego the cost of paying a mountain anytime i buy a card with a mountain and gamers know how good free things are and we turn over a new card the other types of cards that are available are ones that give you points and nothing else so any six tiles for six points these specific five for nine Here's one that is five points as well as an immediate Harabang statue activation. So you take this card and you get to move the statue and then take the tile off whatever's on the top there. Finally, you have this card, which is seven points and you throw away the other four cards in the row and turn out five new cards. Why is that important? Because the game ends either when you cannot place five cards out on display or when all the stacks are empty. And when either of those situations occurs, the game ends immediately and players tally their points with the points coming from the cards that you have collected and each pair of tiles that you have remaining minus any of the Joker Diver tiles, which you just throw away. Whoever has the highest score wins. And there's an overview of Jeju Island, which I played at least five times now on a press copy from Grail Games with two, three, and four players. And as you can tell from the description, the gameplay is simplicity itself, much along the lines of Splendor, where you are just trying to pick up stuff, use that stuff to buy things, and have the most points. That's it. Pick up, buy, win, maybe? Now, people play it at different levels, 
based on their experience with games and what they're what they think they're trying to do. If you are taking the approach of I'm just picking up stuff and I'm going to see if I can win, well, maybe you will, maybe you won't. But as someone who is a gamer who initially played against three people who were not taking that approach, my first buy was something that gives you a free tile for later. And then my second one was this, and then my third one was this, and my fourth one was this. And now anything I bought in the future, I could get at most a four tile discount off of. So I was buying cards constantly with zero or one, two tiles and buying cards over and over again. More than doubling the score of everyone else because I kept picking up tiles in other people's turns. And on my turn, I could just buy something. And it kind of depressed people, but they got the idea that yes, you must focus on these. And the game kind of turned into a race for these each time we would play because you would see the importance of getting a discount. And any gamer who's played lots of different titles knows the value of a discount, knows that that can be what propels you in the future. Right? That's how you keep making broken magic cards is you do stuff where you can get things for free or at least very inexpensive. So that's things that some designers try to avoid, but it's a feature in this game. This is what you're racing for. And so you want to keep that in mind as you're trying to buy certain cards. Are you opening up slots for someone else to get a freebie that's, you know, uh, cheaper later? How many tiles are you getting versus them each time? And what makes sense when you're taking turns? What are you actually trying to get? We've had one game, only one I think, where the person who didn't collect the most of these freebie cards ended up winning. That player collected lots of tiles on their turn. They kept getting the statues, sitting at the statues, and buying 11 and 9 point cards with one or two freebie cards and just edged out for the win. So there is a balance between those two if you're paying attention and not letting one person just hoard these freebie cards. If that's you, then great, you're going to win. If that's not you, you're giving away the game. So you have to focus a little bit more on which tiles you're collecting once you get past that introductory, that level, introductory level of play. The game plays very differently with two, three, and four players. With four players, you don't know where you're going to end up at the start of your turn. You just try to make the best of what you can do. You place the statue somewhere just to get a benefit right now. And you're not worrying about what's going to happen on the later turns because your piece is just going to be moved all over. With two players, extremely different though. The order of the tiles is randomized. And the order of the cards comes out is randomized. But you have a lot more control over whether the opponent can get that statue or whether the opponent can stop you from getting things by covering you up, moving things around the board. It's kind of interesting that that mix of strategy and luck that's blended together. And especially when you have three players, which seems like the best spot possibly for the game, because you will get big stacks of tiles and then you're trying to figure out the best way to lay them out so that people don't get things that you think they want that they're trying to collect based on the cards available and da 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 and all that type of gamey stuff that goes on. So there you go, an overview of Jeju Island, which should be held this way.